backgammongalaxy.com is custom made for the backgammon community. Boost your skills with AI analysis, compete for rating points or galaxy coins, play in the browser or download our Backgammon Galaxy app for free and become the next Grandmaster. Backgammongalaxy.com is the official sponsor of Nordic Open and the Backgammon World Championship. One day, I, when I was in Istanbul, I got a phone call that was from Patty Rubin. May she rest in peace. She was the former producer, owner of this tournament. She opened me and suddenly asked me, would I be interested being the head director of World Championship? I remember I was standing on my feet, but when I got the question, I just sat down. <laughs> because that was something I was not expecting, and that was even not in my dreams. I said, okay, I'm in. The rest we can talk later. <laughs> Most important is, I'm in. I have worked very hard myself in the last 12 years promoting Backgammon in the United States and running my Chicago Open. Backgammon has brought me around the world and I think some people have noticed some of the good things that I do. And Patty invited me to run registration for her for the World Championship. And Mark and company kept me on. It's a blessing to me to be here. I mean, I'm at the World Championship of Backgammon. I did a rebranding. So here is the Backgammon World Championship logo. So we have the main icon here, or the main logo, which is the, the crown. And I wanted to make like a, a nice symbiosis between the board and then this logo here. Basically what you see are like three backgammon points, slightly tweaked to make it look like a crown, basically. When you see a curve below this logo, it's like an attempt to like insinuate a, a backgammon checker. Back in the day, there was a Calcutta auction where they auctioned the players. And then I started doing it in early 2000, I think, and I did it like six years straight. Last year, I did it a little bit for fun, and then the tournament, they asked me if I wanted to, to do it uh, for them. So uh, they gave me a desk, and uh, because uh, people, they love it, you know, to see who's the favorite, how big a favorite. An underdog is winning, he was a, you know, you know that story. I had a lot of players at a thousand to one and, and, and 10 euros you get 10,000, that, that's, that's 10 euros, you, you're gonna, not going to miss that. And it's a great story if you, if you win, right? So, Our styles are, are similar, we, we both care about projecting the right image for the game and the players. We try to make it socially interactive and it brings a lot more people into the game and uh, it's just gone over well and, and I enjoy it. Some people have a natural knack for talking and uh, talking Yeah, I, have, I, I only have one problem how to keep the, my foot out of my mouth when I'm talking and not say the wrong thing but <laughs> and I do occasionally and I get in trouble for it but I, I want to tell you one more thing when I'm commentating I have two goals in mind. One is to make sure the game is understandable to intermediate players and below. The other thing I want to do is make it exciting and interesting and give a little background on the players and how would the player feel when you're shaking the dice and what role means that you're going to get back backgammoned or not. And, yeah, and that's the thing that, that I try to do. I'm addressing broader demographic. Right. I want to add a bit of humor, mm -hmm. some human interest, some background stories. I just want to make it watchable. Yeah. You know, if it's purely technical on a high level, it's going to turn off a lot of less experienced people yeah. when they're watching it. Yeah. And they're if you just tell stories it. and joke the whole time, you're ruining the match. Yeah, you gotta so, do, so you, you got to be somewhere balance. in between. Balance yeah. the two. As Bill uh, said, there are other people who are really great commentators that do a very good job that I love to listen to, but they're nowhere near as smart or good looking as me and Bill. So that's why we're here. <laughs> kind of like the style that I'm going for in general with, with both Galaxy and also the, the Backgammon World Championship is like this clean vector style. We want to remove as much clutter as possible so the player can focus on the game and we believe this maximizes their performance greatly. So far the feedback's been great. Uh, I think it's, it was much needed. We have new ideas, we have 
a lot of motivation to push this tournament forward and of course the branding should match this energy. I can't think of anyone who's had any negative feedback. So that's actually quite amazing. With doing it with my own stand and with the tournament and as a part of the tournament, it's the first time, yeah. It adds an element to a good tournament, right? And uh, people it? just want to have a good time when they go and play a backgammon tournament. Entry fee for the World Championship is 1250 Like I said, we had 200 players. That right there, you can do the math yourself, you feel like. Uh, we also have a high roller tournament where the entry fee was $7,500. We had 16 players in that event. The entry fee for the intermediate division is another 400, and we have 60-ish uh, players in that event already. Multiply those numbers out, and you get a pretty big amount of money brought in. All right, guys, I want this to be a clean fight. You guys are playing for 2,500 a point. Here's the bottom line. This is fun. We got the most fun. I play 18 different games. There's not a game as much fun as backgammon. There's nobody more intelligent, and more fun, and interesting than backgammon people. Oh, I mean, yeah. this is like a reunion every year. Absolutely. Isn't it? I Absolutely. mean, you see all your friends. Absolutely. You know, you dine with them, socialize with them, have fun, you play. It's just. Uh, and here's the funny thing. I can look around this room, I can't name one person in this room that I can't walk up to and give a hug. Yep. I mean, we're all friends. You now, by the way, that wasn't true 10 years ago. There were some, there were some bad actors in backgammon, and there were some people who actually were cheaters years ago. They're not here. They've been washed out. We've been really good about cleaning up this game to where it's at a much higher ethical and fun level, and everybody's here having fun. I think we, oh, the match is getting ready to start. I think we, I think we said it all. Okay, Phil. This is a handmade, uh, designed, needlepoint backgammon board. My mother designed it. It's uh, Egyptian avalus, so she incorporated it in, into the points of a backgammon board. Uh, she probably uh, started in like 1972 or 71. She finished the board in 1975, so it's almost 50 years old. I inherited it as I was the active backgammon player in the family. I'm a representative for Jeffrey Parker, who's a Rolls Royce of backgammon boards. So I called him up, I sent him pictures of it. It took him almost a year to com complete the board. The checkers are jade from uh, China, so they're red and white, and the, the doubler itself is a, uh, is a jade. And the checkers actually weigh quite a bit, so when I pack the board, I have to put the checkers in a separate bag or I'll be over overweight at the airport. I'm fascinated by some of the people that have played backgammon throughout history. And the one that I find the most fascinating is Charles Darwin. When Charles Darwin was writing on the origin of species, he religiously played backgammon. He and his wife played a game every afternoon and he kept intricate records of his games against his wife. As you know, uh, I'm, uh, I'm addicted by backgammon. So playing, winning is a great joy. But at the same time, uh, I already have some knowledge. So uh, transfer my knowledge to other people, it's also a great joy for me. I teach backgammon in New York on the streets for free to anybody that walks up between the hours of 1 and 3 o'clock every other Saturday. 
I teach backgammon to little kids. I teach backgammon in schools to seventh graders and stuff in the public school system. What actually I start taking more from backgammon with the years and what I used to not appreciate at all is the social element. Backgammon is, uh, in my opinion, most interesting from the perspective that who actually who plays that game, you know. It's a combination of very interesting characters and I met some amazing people through backgammon. I've had friends for 40, 50 years in backgammon. They seem to have more longevity than other friends. Like other friends you might be friends with for five or ten years. My backgammon friends seem to be friends my entire life. I have a lot of friends that are, you know, came through backgammon, but I have two or three friends that are just friends. We happen to have backgammon in common. Actually, a lot of my business contacts have come from backgammon. I also met, met my wife through backgammon, which is super important. The biggest uh, thing that I got out of backgammon, not money and not fame, but people in social circles that I got. It opened so many doors for me in different areas that I would never expect. I was very close to my father and uh, he was my hero and my mentor growing up. And then my father got uh, very ill last year and I was taking care of him. So we started playing backgammon again and I lost him a couple months later. Sorry, but um, so, and so like my life at that point really changed because, you know, I felt like I had lost a big part of me and my brain was kind of going a little crazy and so I needed to put my mind into something. And when I play backgammon, I think of my dad, you know, did backgammon save my life? At that moment of time, it, it really, it really did, you know, because I, I had to focus my mind on something and I felt a, a connection to my father whenever I'd play. Well, backgammon has been incredibly important to me. It's not often in anyone's life that you get the chance to be, or at least be perceived to be the best at something. And that had value, not so much for me, just like in the backgammon community, but, but also just in terms of personal self-confidence. When I won the world championship, that putting that on my resume carried weight in the business world as well. Because people give you instant credibility that you're a smart person because you won some world championship in a mod sport. Anytime somebody brings up back Emin and I'm in the scene, oh Joe, he's the former world champion. It makes you feel good. You hear it your whole life. It's like being president. Once you're the president, you're always president. Once you're a world champion, you're always a world champion. And I have a restaurant in Denmark. The money my guests didn't know I'm Former world champion, so they, uh, they challenge me. So every time I have time or not time, I play them. In Monte Carlo, there are two different fractions. One is backgammon community of players traveling all around, and one of the many tournaments they travel is Monte Carlo every year. And the other one is people who travel only one backgammon tournament each year, and that's Monte Carlo. This is their place. I thought backgammon is a boring game, just a game of dice. But uh, I was wrong. Uh, after I found the book, the book uh, explains uh, lots of strategies. Wow, what is that? I was very much surprised. XG is better than any book. The reason why a book is useful is to benefit from the knowledge of others who have done either rollouts or XG. And trust me, before the corona time, I used to, every tournament where I go, to buy a book, you know? I have a lot of books home. <laughs> no, never I touched one. <laughs> yes, I touched them when I buy them and put them in the <laughs> library. <laughs> After that, I bought a computer only for running backgammon program. programs. I never read a book about Pokemon. I never study position about Pokemon. I don't even know how to use the X game. <laughs> and I don't want to learn this because I, I don't want, I don't have interest for that. I think in person's better because you can see the person and you can see like how they're reacting to the moves and their expressions. Live is better, but online is good because Online, we can see the mistake. I can see the, all the mistakes and stuff, and I can get better. I'll never stop wanting to get better. That's all I want. I don't play online, but I, I put my positions into XG, and my systematic approach to learning is, of course, 
when I have an error, I try to look at it and I'm like, oh wow. As soon as I began losing and being like, oh wow, I don't know what I'm doing, I had a huge motivation to get better. I don't, I don't know if I'm getting better. I don't want to know if I'm getting better. I don't do nothing to get better. I want to enjoy the game too. If it come, come. If not, no. When I play, I try to play my best. I don't care if I win or lose. If I play good and lose, it's okay. Most people play the best when they're not really thinking about what they're doing, what they, when it just comes automatically. Backgammon shares that with uh, real life situations. Like when you're just taking a shower or you're riding your bike or you're taking a walk in the park and your mind just goes wherever and you're not focusing on what you're doing. I find that when I play backgammon that way, I enjoy it more and I play better. When you're thinking positively, you're pursuing winning paths rather than trying to avoid losing paths. And I think where backgammon can get dangerous for a player to, to play below the level that they should be playing is when you're more focused on what can go wrong than what can go right. I believe it's best to, uh, to play with a clear mind. If you can achieve a sense state, whether or not you believe in Buddhism, I think that would be the best way to play the game. You ever notice with backgammon players that we always talk about the roles that went against us all the time. All the stories we tell are how we lost. <laughs> we, we're never telling stories about how we won this beautiful match and so. I like to record my matches and to look over them. I prefer doing it the next morning immediately because then you won't just know the error, you'll remember how you felt when you did it. Frequently emotion is the reason why I did something and I, I didn't have a good thought process. When it's someone with cameras just like on the big tables, I don't care. He can register every time they ask me, do you want me to send you the file? No, I don't want. <laughs> because I don't care about the file. I don't say this, it's <laughs> um, It's another pressure when you play in the streaming. There is like the only time when I feel I care about the PR, you know? Because it's everybody watching, they will post your PR, I hate to play streaming. I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate. <laughs> Only if it's a final. I don't care. If I am in the final of the World Championship, I don't care if I play a 10 or if I play a 3. I don't care. <laughs> I was in Ankara. One guy challenged me to play a cash game. <laughs> I play him 17 hours. And I make uh, two uh, dinner break. And I was in the uh, bathroom two times. 17 hours a row. From to 4 p.m. to 7 a.m. Not so. When I play in Chicago, my husband told me because he looked the streaming, no? When I was like in the semifinals, in the finals and so on. And like the commentators, they were, no, what she's doing, no! <laughs> but I have the feeling I have to play this and everything was a good play for me, you know? I think if I'm not bad in Chicago, they told me, the guys who did the X game on his own, I play like an eight. But you see, you can also win with the eight. I'm focused on the idea of building the community up and also just, just improving. Winning doesn't mean necessarily improve. A lot of times I learn more in my losses. I try to find my weakness and I try to fix it. Uh, understanding, fighting weakness is the most important part. Uh, once I found it, it's not so difficult to fix it. You have to uh, devote yourself to the game and you don't ask for the reward, you know? You don't know. You just try, you may fail, but you just try. Otherwise, you cannot succeed. The way I learn something new is because I made some mistake and I lost, and I feel it here like, oh, it's gut-wrenching. And you know what? I'll never make that mistake again. But when you play, and if you're blundering all over the place, but it doesn't hurt you, and you don't lose a match over it, then you're like, oh, that must be the right play. When maybe I take a bad decision and this cost me the game, you know, then it hurts. <laughs> Even though I lose a match, I'm unhappy, of course. I wouldn't be able to enjoy the upsides if I didn't have the downsides. That's why even sometimes the downside, it's just much more enjoyable when there is an upside afterwards because it's just how everything works. I won the tournament in 1989. That's 34 years ago. Back in those days, backgammon was more of a gambling game. Now it's become more of a mind sport. There are a lot of things good about that. The image of backgammon is better worldwide because it is a mind sport now. 
I mean, there's still money involved, obviously, but people don't play for money. They play for the love of the game. They play to get better. It's an intellectual challenge, and people enjoy that intellectual challenge. But back then, I changed. You know, now it's more of a mind sport. You know, and that's also good. You know, and it's more competitive. You have to be sharp. You have to practice. It's evolution. You know, I think it's become more of an intellectual exercise for many people. When maybe in the past it was more just a pure gambling game. There's like two types of game basically. There's games of chance that we do play to pass the time, like just rolling dice and to get some excitement and some gambling. And and then there is uh, strategic games that are historically at least like uh, a kind of war simulation. That's where they like came from. Backgammon is a mixture of, of both. There's a lot of gambling. You can like uh, be really elated when you roll boxes or very sad when you miss a shot. But it also has a lot of uh, strategy to it. You also the nice thing about backgammon that you can be a bit weaker player and still win it, you know. You don't have to be the best. So that's why so many players are here. It's a very easy game to learn, but it's a very hard game to master. It's a different game than it was before. Everybody is much, much better. The PRs are two or three points uh, better. But there's an instinct to the game, and that instinct is important. And now there are many, many books. It's more like chess. You have to memorize the positions. And it's a memory game, a lot of it. I think that's a little unfortunate. Backgammon, unfortunately, is not like chess. It's more like poker. In my opinion, its popularity hinges and, and can be built based on gambling, not based on masses like chess, you know, like millions playing in a school. Because uh, backgammon have a little bit of a uh, gambling stigma. I was a chess player and, and chess was great. But when I discovered backgammon, it took over. The beauty of backgammon as opposed to chess is that in chess the better player always win. In backgammon, the better player only wins, even in tournaments, about 60% of the time. And that's what brings people back and that's what makes it such a, a terrific money game. People will play money for it. I think it's like poker, you should pursue bigger prizes, you should advertise them. And that's how it should grow its popularity. Not on the focus of all this XG, PRs, and analysis. In my opinion, just the wrong uh, direction for backgammon. That's why we see less people in the room and, and older people. Gambling or money, big prizes, bring excitement, bring TV, bring young people. I think with the advent of the computers, the game has become much more technical and much more serious, and the learning curve became much more accelerated. Let's call it the post-XG era of backgammon, and a lot of people say, oh, it was better in the old days, and everything's computerized. But because of the computer, it's brought in so many young people, more variety of people to, to kind of up the level of the game to bring, and I think that's a good thing overall. Life is backgammon, right? It's hard to imagine uh, my life without backgammon. I love backgammon. I, I'm like crazy about backgammon, you know? To play backgammon is like the best thing in the world.